The enemy visited you for death, but you escaped. This can be better. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord, that there be no bad news in your camp. Can I do check this for me? There will be no bad news in your camp. The glory of the Most High God will come upon you like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Act to the Apostles chapter 1 and verse 3. It's a season of visitation. Yeah, this is better. It's a season of visitation. Act to the Apostles chapter 1 and verse 3. Act to the Apostles chapter 1 and verse number 3. I'm going to teach in the next 30, 40 minutes so that we'll have a little time to pray and that's God will help us. Act 1, 3. He said, To whom all soul he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. How many days? Now speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, Jesus was appearing after his passion. That means after Easter, Jesus was appearing to people 40 days. So the 40 days after Easter has not elapsed. That means this season is a season of divine visitation. That is to say that God will visit you and answer the question in your heart. God will visit you and answer the question in your marriage. God will visit you and answer the question over your family. There will be a visitation that will turn the event of your life around for good this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Pay attention to me. Expect the visitation of God. It is what you expect that you will experience. Whatever you will not expect, you will never experience. Whatever you expect is what you experience. There is not as such as a visitation like the visitation of God. When God visits you, he puts an end to all your struggles. I remember one time we had a challenge and then we were praying at the old church. And I remember late that morning we began to pray. I remember we were about four or five in that hall. Yes. I remember my wife and I, we don't have a baby then, I remember. My my wife and I, Moses, Samson, and all of those, about, yes, about five, if I I remember. And then we began to pray. And then usually we used to have about three prayer points, and then we lead those prayers, and then we ask God, oh God, let there be open heaven. I remember I was praying for open heaven. Oh God, let there be open heaven over our lives. Let there be open heaven over this church. Let there be open heaven over every the member of this church. Those were the three prayers we were praying. Over my life, over every member of this assembly, and over this assembly, let there be open heaven. And it was around 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. we were praying. I remember the open place was dark because we could not even, we couldn't know on the generator or something as the case might be. So we are praying, And then I was facing the wall while praying. And I find myself crying in the midst of the prayer. And then the Lord said, open your eyes now. And I opened my eyes and I saw a being walking into the hall and standing at the whole church in Lucy and standing by the right hand side of the church. And then that being was emitting light. And I could see, I could see his hand, like a hole inside his hand, like someone who was who was actually being crucified. And then the, that being spoke to me that day. And then you want the heavens to be open? He said, you sing this song and the heaven will be open. That marked the very first song I ever wrote in my life. And I, anytime I want the heavens open and I sing that song, I see the heaven open over me. You see, God can give you a visitation and a call and an encounter that will bring about a turnaround in your life. When God visits you, the question around your life is solved. When God visits you, the equation around your life becomes balanced. When God visits you, the situation around your life experience will turn around. Hear me right now as I hear God. There are many of us who have not been waiting for the visitation of God. And this is why I look as if we don't have that experience. But I'm commanded by God to speak to someone here this morning. By the authority of the Holy Ghost, that there will be a visitation around your life that will shift you forward in every area of your life and in all the department of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. If I in church, I told you, amen will be loud. This morning, I'm commanded by God. It's a month of visitation. And then we are going to be experiencing visitation by the world. So we are going to be studying the word of God all through. The caption is we're going to be studying the word of God all through. So I have been commanded by God to speak to us this morning. The power of the spoken word. The power of what? John 6 and verse 63, please the person on the system, I would really love you can incorporate with me and be very fast so that we really can have a speed of light, uh, speed of light with what we want to do this morning. John 6, 63, he said, 
It is the spirit that quickened it. He said, the flesh profited nothing. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit and their life. The way you want to define words, you could say words are units of language. For example, if you say good morning, good morning, good and morning is a combination of a language. And that language actually means English language. So if you say inakwana, inaku, ana, if you put that together, kwana can be money, inakwana can actually be defining to a person. And that actually validates that you are speaking a language called Aousa language. When you see somebody and you say, or two to a man, you might actually be speaking an evil language. You see, that, those are combinations. Those are combinations of words. So, what are units of language? Words are what? Unit of language. So, I believe to put words together, validate the language you are speaking. Are we together? When you say Ade is a boy, those are words put together to actually validate that there is a character in it called Ade. And Ade is a boy. A boy actually referring to a language is English language. So, words are units of language. Words a unit of language. And I can tell you by the understanding of scriptures that what are expression of life? What are what? is only a living being that can actually utter a word. What are expression that you are alive? It's only somebody that is alive that can actually utter a word. A dead person cannot utter a word. This is what the Bible speaking there. He said the words that I speak to you, he said they are spirit and they are what? They are life. It takes a living to be able to utter a word. So when we talk about the word of God, the word of God is living. That means our God is alive. He can actually utter a word. So words are expression that you are actually alive. The words that I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit and they are what? They are life. And we can say words are expression of a spirit. Because you cannot actually see words. So that's also you can see spirit. That validate that a spirit is at work. Believe me as I said so. Many of us have skipped far before for our Christmas or location, as the case might be, we have actually been able to dissect many living things to enjoy ourselves. All right, but anytime you kill that your cow, your goat, your chicken, as the case might be, you will never find the speaker working in the person. There are many of us who are medical professionals that, where we actually serve as a medical as a medical professionals, you, when you have to dissect a woman being, when life is still in the person, the person is a mystery. But when the person is dead, you will never find what is speaking in the person. It means the spirit. That's why the Bible said, a man is a spirit. He lives in what? A body and he has a what? A soul. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. So every man that is actually alive has capacity to bring forth words. That means it's an expression of life and it validates that there is a spirit on the indwelling inside of you. This word, the Bible said, he said, the words that I speak to you their spirit and their life. It takes one that has the spirit and has the life to be able to utter a word. So when you can speak, it means your spirit is alive. When you can speak, it means your life is still alive. Can I say amen to that? How many people are alive this morning? Let me shout hallelujah. No, you are not, not sounding like you are. There are many people are alive and grateful for life. With your hands, let me shout hallelujah. But the good news is this, that before every creation was the world. In Genesis chapter 1, can we travel very fast? In Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 1 down to 3. And from there, I'm going to read verse 6, verse 8, verse 9. Then about to verse 31. Before every creation is the world. Many of us who ever have anything around our life, we can actually validate every creation by the words we speak. I'm going to get there. So I'm actually going to navigate to also see what it takes to have a spoken word. There is an efficacy and a power that comes with every spoken word. Can I say amen to this? Alright, look at this. He said, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Move to the next verse. God created heavens and the earth. Move to the next verse. He said, and the heart was it out form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit, don't forget the words that I speak to you they are what? They are spirit and what? And their life. So that means it takes a living being to be able to alter the world. It means a spirit is at work and a life is at work. Don't forget that. Put that at the back of your mind. That anywhere you hear what, there is a life there and there is a spirit working. How many living beings you have in the assembly? Shout hallelujah. Or it means there is a spirit at work and there is a life at life. If you permit me to say that. Now, look at what the Bible said. He said, the heart was in that form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And he said, and the spirit of the Lord. He said, as, as, and the spirit of the Lord moved over the face. Don't forget. The spirit of God began to move over the waters. Verse 3 now. 
Verse 3 now. He said, And God said, God could not say until the spirit move. The words that I speak to you, their spirit and their what? God could not say until the spirit. So that means it takes a living being only to proclaim a word. You see, this is why you need to be grateful for life. When you have a serious attack on your head, one of the things the devil does is to shut your mouth. You see this? And God said, let there be light. And the Bible said, there was light. But the good news is this. After that the spirit moved, validating there was life in God, after that, the, after that the expression of life came through God, we saw that everything that God said, God saw. Verses of the scripture. Multi verses of the scripture. Verses of the scripture. Now, did you see this? And God said, did you see this? So, at the beginning of every creation was the world. So, if you want anything created, the beginning and the foundation of it, if God is our example, if Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, at the beginning of everything is the world. So, God could not create anything without the world. Look at this. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Look at verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Oh, I love this one. And let, let it be that water divides water. Have you thought about that? Waters was dividing water. Have you thought? I wish there is a challenge. You see, your troubles can be divided from troubles. There is a dimension of the expression of the Spirit of God that can make things divide from themselves. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Ah, I wish there is time to actually talk about this scripture alone. This is not to close this service. Waters can be divided from waters. There are people who trouble don't visit. Because the waters will divide it from the waters. Thank you Lord Jesus. All right, let's keep to let's keep to our let's keep to our study. Now go to verse nine of this scripture. Remember that the spirit of God was at work validating life, and yet you could actually bring forth an utterance, and the utterance could actually become manifestations. Now look at verse nine. Verse nine said, "And God said, let the waters be." Now move to verse twelve of this scripture. Pay attention to and God said. Move to verse twelve of this scripture. Did you see? And the heart brought forth. Verse fourteen now, and the heart brought forth. Did you see this? And God said, are you seeing this? Can you jump to verse 26? Every, at the foundation of every creation was the word. Everything that we could see that is actually created and is alive today is actually an expression of the life of God or the spirit of God that was set into being because at the foundation of every creation is the word. Look at verse 26. And God said, are you seeing this? But we can read this because of time. He said, and let us make who? Man in our own what? And after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Now let me say this. The word of God will not actually be potent if the person offering it is dead. But God is alive. His spirit is alive. So he could alter the world. And everything that God said, God could see. So behind creation is the potency of the world. Is the efficacy of the world. Is the power of the world. That's actually the power of spoken word. As long as you carry the life of God, you carry the spirit of God on your inside, your world can create. You don't believe me. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse, Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. You carry the spirit of God on your inside. You carry the life of God on your inside. The word that I speak to you, their spirit and their life. And the spirit of God move over the face of the deep. And why he move over the face of the deep? He said, let there be light and there was light. And after light came, everything that God said, God was saying. Why the life of God finding expression? Why the spirit of God finding expression? If you carry the spirit and the life of God, I can guarantee you, your words can create. This is what the Bible said. Now look at this in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. He said, through faith you understand that the words, did you see that there? He said, the words are framed by what? The words. Did you see S at the back? So business can actually be a word. Marriage can actually be a word. Can I tell you, any word you are trying to create without the word is going to frustrate you. The reason why many Christians are frustrated in their journey in life is that they try, they try to create with the life and the spirit of God without the word. It's never balanced. You can't create anything. And this is why this church is built on the scripture. 
My, the destiny of my children are built. There are scriptures for one to one. I find it. I labor to get it. My marriage is built on one scripture. Anytime one thing wants to shoot, I go back to that scripture. The word of God cannot fail. It doesn't matter the number of challenges you have in this church. You will never shut down. People can go in and go out. Nothing will ever reduce. It's found on one scripture. We have never known a better yesterday. I can guarantee you something. On the scripture. If you have the life of God and the spirit of God and you can build on the world, I guarantee you can create anything. He said, through faith, we believe. Well, we believe the provision of God, the life and the spirit of God. We believe the provision of God. That means the life and the spirit of God. And through this, we can frame our words by his word. We can frame our words by his word. My marriage is framed by the word. My finances is framed by the word. I will never conform to what is happening in this country. It doesn't matter how shallow or terrible it is with people. I am a special breed. I carry the life and the spirit of God. I find the expression of the spirit of God walk through me and I can guarantee you some I see result after God kind. I see result after God kind. When men say there is a casting down, then will I say there is a lifting up for me? Can I guarantee you something? If you are very consistent with your confession, it becomes a reality. Whatever you are consistent to confess becomes your what? I am broke, you will be broke. I can never be broke, but yet there is no money in your pocket. If you will not stop it, you become your reality. I said it here when you look as if it's not possible. I said a day is coming. A day is coming. A day is coming. A day is coming. Who could not raise 400,000 to buy a piece of land then in Dusi? And then I look, I say a day is coming. We'll be a heart of this place and we'll be in a place far better than this. I could see 200 people. It has happened. When we are trying to put this building together, we are actually trying to somewhat like $10,000 there. That's about 3.5 million there. And then we never discovered that 8 million naira would be actually what would help us to do the starting point of all the things we needed. We gathered a few of the persons that were in church and we had a meeting at the entrance there. One of the dear brothers said to me, he said, let me tell you this, this is a fact, we are struggling. I said, no, we are not. Is that what you see? I began to, I began to counter words against what this dear brother said. And everything that I said, I've seen it. I said, now, since some of you don't believe God can provide, you won't be a part of it, you will see things done. That was what happened. and speak against you, you can actually stop it right there. This is why every situation always wait for your judgment. He said, every tongue that shall rag against you in judgment, you shall you shall every tongue always waiting for your judgment. Why do you think the Bible speaking? Okay, do you think the Bible was making mistaken when it was actually speaking in the, the, the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20. He said, death and life lies in the power of your tongue. He said, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You, you've not read that? That in your mouth is death. That in your mouth is life. So when your confession is death, your experience will be death. Ah, I'm afraid I'm dying. I'm afraid I'm sick. I'm afraid it's not well with me. Nobody ever rise in my family. You know why? Nobody will ever rise. Proverbs 18. Can we jump to Proverbs 18? Before everything, because you carry the life of God, because you carry the spirit of God, before everything created was the word. How many of you believe? Say, I carry the spirit of God. No, 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 you are not saying it. Say, I carry the spirit of God. I carry the life of God on my inside. And I have the power to create by my mouth. Did you say this? Proverbs 18, jump down to verse 20. Verse 20, please walk with me faster. Now look at this. He said, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of what? So if you are hungry, why are you hungry? What you speak. I've said it again and again, that's walk like fire. I can never be broke. 
I can never be broke another day. Somebody said, you don't have, he said many people have confessed it and they are suffering it. And you know something? You see, there are many pastors on the pulpit who are praying with the spirit of error. Who actually will come and tell you some confessions are not right. I have sincere respect for the body of Christ. I will never talk down against any prophetic, any prophet, I will never talk down on any prophet. There are many of you who know what God does not do, does not exist. I have seen many people talk down that phrase and have actually warned them and spoke to them. What God cannot do does not, you, can't, you don't believe in it, but you don't know the life and the spirit of God that the man carries. You don't have an encounter that the man has with God. You don't know what made that man to bring about that kind of a reality. Then why are you speaking against what you don't know where the man bring it from? And he has proofs to validate that what God cannot do. Ah, ah. Why? There is a spirit of God on the inside. There is a life of God on the inside that actually bring about a proclamation. And that proclamation is bringing a result. Then why are you fighting it? This is what we do in the body of Christ. We talk down the things. And then, and many of you, when you are talking down, no grief for anybody. No one, they are talking down. Many of you, they are even saying it. When they want to, te- when we are telling you in church, you need to forgive. You say, no, I no grief. I no grief. Why? Because of the, because of the phrase from the devil that you have actually masterminded and then that becomes your expression. The devil cannot do anything without going with a word. God will never do anything without actually proceeding with a word. And this is why you need to be careful with the word you profess because your confession will become your reality. You can succeed above what comes out from your mouth. This is what the Bible said. He said, the man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of what? With the fruit of what? He didn't say with what you are eating. With the fruit. It's the thing that comes out from your lips that guarantees if you are not going to be hungry. Can you say this? He said, and with the increase of his lips, it shall be what? That means you will not stop and you will not conform to the challenges. I cannot be broke another day of my life. I'm beautiful and wonderfully made. Let me tell you this. Beauty is first from the inside before from outside. This is why the clothes you are wearing is registered in your head. You are not seeing your back, but the one you have seen in the mirror is registered in your head. Beauty is first on the inside. And how beauty comes is that you talk it out. A wonderful and fearfully made. That begins to shape the way you walk. That begins to shape the way you relate. And then that begins to actually emanate and radiate the glory and the fragrance of heaven. Verse 21 of this scripture. Is somebody learning this morning? Are we in church? All right, verse 21 of this scripture. He said, now read with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Death and life, they that love it shall what? The fruit around your life actually validates what you are speaking. Nothing will die in my life. Nothing. Nothing dies in my hands. I've been shouting like a madman that will not do better than anyone in this church. There's no one who is genuinely connected to the, this church when is this Sunday that will die. I know it. I've been saying it for long. Except you are doing part time in, part time out. But the grace of life covers you if you are truly an 100% membership of this church. I've been saying it for long. There are no member of this church who get no surgery to give birth. It has happened. There's no one who has ever done any surgery to give birth in this church before since we started. I confess it, I see it. Because when your confession becomes consistent, it becomes a reality. When your confession becomes consistent, it becomes a what? You are broke because of your mouth. You are suffering because of what you speak. Death and lives, because any tongue that shall rise up against you, the judgment you will. So anyone you condemn is condemned. We are going to get there. Are we together? So everything created was actually created. And let me say this. Everything in God begins with the word. Everything in God can find expression with the word. Everything in God begins with what? And everything in God finds expression with what? Now take about blessing and causes. When you want to bless a man, is it not a word that go forth? Say in the name of Jesus, you are blessed and the person becomes empowered to prosper. What do you think in Genesis chapter 27 that Isaac spoke to Jacob? He said, you are blessed, you are the excellence of this and that. And the word that actually proclaimed upon you becomes a blessing. 
Okay, what do you think was proclaimed in Genesis chapter 4 upon Cain? Was it not what? That actually that made Cain to become cursed? So, blessings and curses finds its expression on the wings of the world. If the words are positive, it comes to experience. If the words are negative, it comes to experience. That's why the Bible said, death and lies, lies in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So everything in God begins with the word. Everything in God finds expression with the word. Everything in God begins with the word. Everything in God finds expression with the word. Everything in God begins with the word. Everything in God finds expression with word. Blessing and causes. Blessing finds expression on the word. Causes find expression on the word. Healing finds expression. By what? In Psalm 107 and verse 20, the Bible says, Psalm 107 and verse 20, if the, scripture, if the studio can help me faster, Psalm 107 and verse 20, everything in God finds expression with the word. Everything in God begins with the word. Everything in your life should find expression by your word. And everything around your life should find expression through your word. If you're a doctor, how do we know you're a doctor? The things you speak. He said the celebra to the medulla oblongata come to the refano and then I come down to the spine. He said, when you begin to speak like that, you already know. He said the terminal A to terminal 4 to terminal 4 will actually connect the junction and then it comes at this junction and to be able to prepare light to all the circuits. We already know you are an electrical engineer. He said there is a market in uh, there's a market in Maraba. There's another one in Yanya. The apple there is always fresh. You already know you are selling food. Because what you carry on the inside finds expression by what you speak. Now look at this. Even the virtue of God that brings about healing. Look at it. The Bible said he sent his what? Sent his what? Sent his what? Sent his what? And do what? Heal them and deliver them from what? God can heal or deliver anyone without his word. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20, can you be very fast to you? In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20, I'll read that to verse 22. Glory to God. Tap your neighbor, say, speak the right words. Say, Kabarati Yama. Tap your neighbor, say, create the right atmosphere. Word create atmosphere. Word create, word create words. Words in marriage. Every sector is created by the word. Create the right atmosphere. In my place, there is no sorrow. In my house, there is no barrenness. In my house, there is no sorrow. In my house, it's all around joy. We are alive and well. We are healthy and wealthy. You say, you say, you are still broke. You are not supposed to be talking like that. How come when you are saying you are poor, you are broke? Nobody ever stops you. You've not noticed that when you speak negatively about yourself, nobody stops you. It's when you speak what is right, people tell you to stop. Why? Because your confession is doing something to the kingdom of darkness. You can tell people, oh, I am broke, my life is terrible, nothing good can ever come out of my life, everything is just hard, this country is hard, I'm just depressed, yeah, I can never make it in life. Nobody stops you. But when you say, I'm the head and not the tail, they say you are proud. He said, I shall be above only and not beneath. They will say, what's your problem? He said, your shoe is even bent. As a... People will always make you to stop confessing what is right. And if they dare can stop you from confessing what is right, they've stopped the manifestation that you're about to see. Everything in God is created by the word. Everything in God finds expression by the word. Look at this. He said, my son, attend to my word. Incline your ear. Pay attention to this. He said, my son, attend to my words. And incline your ears to my saying. Move to the next verse very fast. Move to the next verse very fast. He said, let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thy heart. Move to the next verse. Verse 22 now. He said, for their life, you see this? He said, for their life to them that what? Find them and head to what? So the word of God brings a particular kind of life cause we When the word, this is why the Bible said, about Ezekiel chapter 2, number 2, he said, the spirit of the Lord entered into me when he spake unto me. There is something that enters into you. Ezekiel 2, 2. There is something that enters into you when he spake unto you. The word of God brings about a dimension of a life where you will never in any way. Look at what the Bible said here. He said, and the spirit of the Lord entered into me when he what? When he spake unto me. 
When words enter you, the Spirit of God enters. It brings you back the life called the Zoe life of God. So what is transmitted to you from the Word of God is actually the life and the Spirit of God. And this is why you can create. Are we together? And set me upon my feet that I had them that speak to me. You cannot actually come into the realm of God when the Spirit of God has not entered into you. And the Spirit of God will enter into you by His Word. By His Word. What you speak is your experience. What you confess consistently is your reality. The way you look is what you say. If you are not looking right, we know your confession. You are not consistent. If you have actually declared that you are beautiful, there is a way you will not dress. Like all Sivra Tabahan Are we together? Ateka Roski Brodiatata. Can I show you one more scripture? Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. And I'll move from there. Thank you Lord Jesus. Everything begins with the word. And everything finds expression by the word. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. Thank you Lord Jesus. Holy Barahata. Now please read. If you are with me. If you are in church. Read with me. Want to read. He said thy word have I found. And I did what? Did you see you can eat the word? The word have I found, and I did eat them. And when you eat them, what happens? He said, Thy word unto me, the joy and the rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O God. The word you eat brings one thing to you. Two, sorry. Joy and what? So when, when you are depressed, what did you lack? You are not feeding on the word. When you are broke, what do you lack? You are not feeding on the word. When you are confused, what do you lack? You are not. When you are crying for disappointment and defeat, what do you lack? So, blessing and curses rise on the wings of the world. Health and healing rise on the wings of the world. And the good things about the supernatural manifestations. And now, these three things, this is what I'm going to talk about. And I will close in this service. Number one is blessing and causes rise on the wings of the world. Number two is what? Healing and health. I just showed you that scripture. Number three is supernatural manifestations. Supernatural manifestations rise on the wings of the world. Luke chapter 5. Can we read from verse 5 to 7? Luke chapter 5. Supernatural manifestations rise on the wings of what? Of the world. So be careful what you say. These are the part of the spoken word. You can bless, you can cause with your words. You can be healed and enjoy health with your words. You can bring about supernatural manifestation with your words. Are we together now? Now, Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. We're going to read it from verse 1. We'll read that in verse 7. We'll read it from verse 1 and then we'll read it from verse 7. He said, and he came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. And he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Move to the next verse, verse 2. And saw two sheep standing by the lake. And then the fishermen were gone out of, the, of them and were f- and washing their they are next. Move to the next verse, verse 3. And he entered into one of the sheep and was Simeon. That means he belonged to Simon Peter. And then prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. So Jesus borrowed the sheep and then began to preach from there. Alright, verse 4. And when he had left speaking, he said to Simeon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. Verse 5 now. Don't forget that Peter was a professional fisherman and he has fished all all his life. And the one thing about this professional fisherman is that he's even older than Jesus in here. All right, move to the, let's see verse 5. And Simeon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toyed all night and have caught what? Nothing. He said, nevertheless, I die word. I will let that in it. Keep the scripture here before we go to verse 6. The meaning of this is this. How many of us are actually professional? Maybe you are a professional nurse, for instance, and you say, there are only two places you could give injection. Number one is that you could give to the hand, or you can give to the hand, or you give to the bum bum. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, three. Maybe you could give to the labs. You understand what I'm saying? Or they could draw intravenous and they look for a vein anywhere and pass through and, and make the, the, the injection or whatever they want to inject the person to pass through intravenous. Just look for, just look for any, any vein that can connect where you are going to the heart and then they could pass it through. That's what it is. But you know something? 
Jesus said, contrary to all of that, you have tried, you have been looking for vain, yeah, you could not get. You're a professional doctor, you've actually been a doctor for more than, okay, we have Dr. Shagun here, there's a medical doctor here. All right, you see, doctor, so he knows what I'm talking about. Now, you see, you've actually done everything in your reach to be able to look for vain and you do not get. And Jesus is saying, just do the hand like this. He said, wow. He said, I've done that. I'm a doctor and I have experience. I've done everything medically possible. And Jesus is saying, forget your professionalism. Just do what I ask you to do. And Peter said, he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when Peter let down the net in verse 6, move to the verse 6 now. When Peter let down the net in verse 6, he said, and when they had done this, and enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net, what? Break. Move to the next verse 7. To the point that they beckon on their neighbor, he said they beckon onto their partners, which were in other sheaves, that they will come and help them. And they came and filled the boat and filled the boat, the, the boat, the boat sheaves, and they began to what? Now, this guy has actually looked for fish and he could not get. His professionalism already failed. One of the best times to actually do fishing is in the night. And they have tried all night and they caught nothing. And Jesus came in the morning and said, give me your boat. I just want to stand here right now. I want to preach to the people. And after preaching, he said, well, you need fish? He said, just go to this side. You're going to find fish. He said, I've been there in the night. But I'm telling you, even if I cannot, even if fishes are not there, my words can create fishes to go and wait for you right there. Because the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Life. Anything God speaks to you, it might not be there before because the word of God will create them. When God said, Go to the sea, He said, The first fish you will catch, open the mouth, you will find the coins. The coins hard, even the fish hard, even the net obey. Nevertheless, at thy word, whatever you do, nevertheless, at the word of God, guarantees a turnaround. I love the story in John chapter 2. If you can be very fast, we'll read from verse 1 to 5. I can even read from verse 5 down the line. Can we start John chapter 2? Anything you do at the instance of his word, you are putting his life, you are putting his life on the line, you are engaging his spirit at the same time. There must be, there must be a turnaround. So supernatural manifestation are a result of his word. Are we together? Now, can we start from verse 1? Follow me carefully, verse 1. I'm rounding up already, amen? Is somebody blessed already? We can close service there. Eh? You have something to go home with. Glory to God. Alright. John chapter 2, verse 1. Alright, he said, And the third day, when there was marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, the next verse. Verse 2 now. And both Jesus, and both Jesus was called and his disciple to the marriage. The next verse. They invited Jesus to marriage. You see that? So when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they, ha they have no what? Move to verse 3. <laughs> there was a problem here. Yeah. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no what? Verse 4. Verse 4. And Jesus said unto them, Woman, what, I what, wh what do I have to do with you? My hour last not yet come. Verse 5. Because the mother knows the kind of son he had. He said, Jesus can be here and there will be no one. The word that I speak to you, their spirit and their life. It is the word that created water. The same word can create wine. It is the word that created water. The same word can create what? It is God that creates you. The same word can create marriage. It is the Kalaboski Vroti Yamariskita. Have you have you have you heard before? I see Balata Bradi. He said, Blessed be the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in what? In heavenly So we can by our mouth and by his word bring down what is registered in heaven down to the heart. That's how powerful the word of God is. Alright, can we go now? And his mother said unto his unto the servant, read between if you are Christian, one, two, read. Whatsoever he said unto you. He said what? King James, King, New King James said, whatever he tells you to do, do what? Because anything you do at the instance of the word of God guarantees the results. Even if that thing is not there before, because the word of God has capacity to create, the word will already be waiting to create that thing. 
They say you cannot be healed. God, the word of God can create the healing. They say Kalaboski I was speaking with somebody. I was speaking to Erica. I, I mentioned the name so that I can verify. I was speaking to Erica some days ago. There are some witches in their places who used to do some kind of invocation and all of that. And then anytime she goes to the office, she used to have one kind of headache and they used to be terrible. And then she reads and says, Pastor, are you not going to pray? I said, there's no need to pray. I said, but the truth is there is a witch in your place. I said, but the witch will soon confess. He said, you tell me the name of the witch so that I can be, I can be running from the witch or I can mistake. I said, there's no point. The witch will confess. Last Thursday, the witch came to the office. He said, I'm a witch. You know what? I've actually do. began to confess. He wrote me. He said, wow. He said, wow, the witch confessed today. The witch confessed today. Even if, the, what, even if that thing, if that reality is not there, as long as the word of God goes forth to create the reality. So when you are banking on the world, you are banking on the life and the spirit that can create anything, even if it's not dead before. Even if they have said you will not be married, the word of God can create a husband. Even they say you won't prosper, the word of God can create a business. The year you make you to prosper, just to validate that the word of God is true. He said, my glory will I not share with anyone. God is so jealous over you that even if anyone has said anything against you, the word of God can come and render it non and void. And his mother said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And they obey. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 of the same scripture. Look at verse 6. He said, never stood six stone water pots and the kind used by the Jews for the ceremonial worship. Each labeling from 20 to 30 gallons. Move to the next verse. And Jesus said unto the servant, fill the jars with what? So when they fill them to the brim. Move to the next verse. Move to the next verse. Instruction can be, pro- instruction can be progressive. Instruction can be what? Move to the next verse. He said, and he told them, he said, now draw some out and take to the master of the banquet. And they did so. Move to the next verse. Verse 9. Verse 9. And the master of the banquet tested the water. He was testing water, but something happened. He, he tested the water. Calm down now. Please drink water. The person on the system, please drink water. Amen. All right, he tested the water and that he had turned into what? How can you taste water? How can you drink water? You know, many of you who are drinking used to justify yourself that Jesus turned water into wine so I can actually drink. Don't be deceived. The wine here is not an alcoholic wine. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You are deceiving Star Lager, wine euro. Stop deceiving your amen. He says, Men of does not have eye, eye. it's just about 20, 12 percent. Stop deceiving yourself. Are we together? Uh-huh. Don't go and quote this scripture nonsense and go and say you are drinking. Are we together? Today is Sunday. No broku to tap your neighbor. No broku to. No, no, amen. Okay, I'm facing the Bible. Amen. I'm facing. It. Tap somebody. Say no broku to. Amen. All right. All right. So and then when 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 the master of the ceremony actually tasted the wine, he discovered that when he tasted the Bible said he tasted water, but in his mouth he became what? Why? Because the word of God carries the life and the spirit of God that can create anything he says. He wants to create. Somebody say, I'm sick. I say, you can never be sick. Why? I carry the life and the spirit of God on the inside. Even if you look and say you are sick, I created the healing. You know, we are as God. This is what the Bible said. The Bible said we are gods. So we can act like him. We are in the realms of God if you are genuinely born again. That's what the Bible said in John chapter 1 and verse 12. Don't go there. It says, as many as received it, today they give power to become sons of God. So you are empowered to become. You are not ordinary. There is a life and the spirit of God on your inside that your words has the capacity to create. For many of us who play with our words, our destiny will fail. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's true. I don't play with your comments from my mouth. I speak in royalty. He said, this cannot work, it will work. If I've listened to the advice of people who love me so much, who said this is too hard, you need to calm down, I will have shut down by now. One of my friends traveled abroad and came back and then came to visit me yesterday and walk right this campus and said, man, things has changed. Things has changed. And I never called him one day for financial aid all through this time. He stayed in abroad. No, oh, he said, things has changed. Yeah, the people who know how this thing starts from the scratch. Your world can create. So, supernatural manifestation can be created by the world. 
health and healing can be created by the word. Blessings and causes right on the wings of the word. Glory to Jesus. Don't forget we said everything in God begins with the word. And everything in God finds expression by what? By the word. Let me read one more scripture and I'll stop here. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 35. I'll read down to verse 37 and I'll stop. And I'll tell you three things you need to take home. There are three things you will take home today. Three things you are taking home. Number one, okay, Matthew 12 first. Matthew 12, 35. Matthew 12, and verse 35. Now look at this. He said, please read with me there, Christian. He said, a good man brings food out of where? Out of his good in him. Where's our store that is in us? We'll get there. Just wait. And an evil man brings what? Evil from the things of the evil is stored up in what? So when you are speaking, we are looking at what is stored up in you. Look at verse 36. You understand where the storehouse is now. Look at verse 36. Read with me. 36, he said. Jesus was speaking here. He said, but I tell you that everyone will give account of, on the day of judgment for every empty word that has... Can you use King James of this scripture? Can we use King James in this one? He said, for every man will give an account of what? Of every I do word. He said, I'm looking at you. Your head look like a ball. Uh-uh. If God say your head look like a ball, your head will turn to ball. Yeah, because everything God says, God see. That's why I'm not against comedian, but no comedian will minister on this or party like that. Even I will write it in the legacy of this church. Anyone who dare be commander to this church dies right there. I'm not against anything, whatever craft you use. Comedy can be used in naming and other other places. You understand me? But not on the holy altar of God. I'm sorry, this is my dealing. Don't get angry at me. I'm not stupid. Because anything, you carry the life and the spirit of God on your inside. Whatever you say becomes your experience. Whatever you say, you will see. Did you see that? So if God said, your head look like a bow, what will your head turn to? I thought of a story of a pastor, a man of God, you could put it on Google. One person was misbehaving in seven days. said, are you mad? That was only the thing the man of God asked, and the person ran mad. Because whatever you say under the influence and the life of the, under, whatever you say under the influence and the spirit of God becomes a reality. Are we together? He said, for, now look at this. He said, but I say unto you, that every idle word that men will speak, they shall give account on the day of who? He said, your baby look like goatee. Go to you. God said you will stand on the door of judgment and you give. This is how powerful words are. That every word you speak, you will account for it. Move to the next verse, verse 37, and I'll stop here. He said, For by thy word thou shalt be what? And by thy word thou shalt be what? Your justification is by your word. Your condemnation is by your what? So that you are justified that you are not broke comes by your what? That you are broke and you are condemned to poverty is justified by what? Whatever becomes your consistent confession becomes your reality. Everything in God begins with the word. Everything in God finds expression with the word. Our take home tonight, number one, read and study the word of God. This is one thing that we don't like in our days. We love good sermon, we love good service, we love good ambience, we love all of that, but many Christians are irresponsible. We don't read, that's why we are duped. Second Timothy 2 and verse 15, it says, study the word that you be approved unto God. So what approved you to God is the depth of the word of God you know. Second Timothy 2 15, it says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needed what? That needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the meaning is, what approves you in the in the presence of God is what? Is the word, the word of God on your inside, the spirit of God and the life of God on your inside approves you. What is the difference between a pastor and a member? The word and the spirit of God that approves the man of God. He has a lot of it. That's why Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, He said, Your word dwell in me richly. So you can, in all wisdom, so the word of God can dwell in you richly in all wisdom. I will learn it. It's a study to show that self approved. So take home today, read and study the word of God. Number two, meditate. Number two is what? Can you look at Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And I'll close in this service. Take home today, go and create a system and a culture of study. 
of the world and create a system and a culture of meditation. Every spectacular things I've seen in the world is a product of the meditation that I meditate. I'll pick one scripture or like five or six, seven scriptures and I begin to meditate on it or something. And most times I don't like the noise around me because I'm meditating on something. And before you know, something will drop in my spirit, you will engage it and it will bring results. Joshua 1 8. He said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. He said, Thou shalt meditate day and day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to what is written therein. He said, For thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have what good. So your meditation on the world determines how much good success and how much prosperity that will come your way. Is somebody blessed this morning? Stand to your feet. Lift your two hands. Give God thanks for his word this morning. If Rako, Sibranda, just stand to your feet, lift your two hands, and we got thanks for his word this morning. Glory to Jesus. Just lift your hands and just honor Jesus. Say thank you for your word. Your word brings about blessing and then take away the curses. Your word brings about healing and health. Your word brings about supernatural manifestations. Yes, yes. And I know I'm going to be condemned and be justified by my words. So I'm going to start speaking the right words right now. I'm going to start speaking the right words. My business move forward. You carry the life and the spirit of God on your inside. I don't give God thanks for his word this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'd like you to just speak right now in the understanding you have received right now. Is there any area of your life that you decide to turn around? Speak to that. You see, don't speak like you are actually praying. Command like a man of authority. Speak, say business move forward. Yes. Thou turn around faith assembly move forward. Is that a good is that a good is that a good decree right now? Speak to your marital destiny now. You carry the life of God on your inside. You carry the spirit of God on your inside. You carry the creative power of God in your mouth. We do lift your mouth. We do lift your voice right now and speak. Speak to that business. Say business you will not die. Business move forward. Speak right now. Speak to that family. Speak to that family. Family. Speak to that situation. Speak to that situation. Speak to that health challenge. Will you speak right now? Speak to that contract is coming. Speak to that contract is coming. When your confession becomes consistent, it becomes your reality. When your confession becomes consistent, it becomes your reality. When your confession becomes consistent, it becomes your reality. I can never be broke another day of my life. I will never be hospitalized another day of my life. My health is sound. My health is sound. My health is sound. I carry the life and the spirit of God. Oh, don't speak right now. We have two minutes to go. Speak right now. The Bible says speak that you might be justified. Your justification is what you are saying. Your justification is your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, le vrakoski bronti amante, ke roski brodi amati agesa. In Jesus' mighty name.